30 years of, you know, doing fight scenes, you know, it's like everything is completely different. You know? I can't throw a punch anymore. This yeah, I know. It's like complete, I have to do something completely different. And, and then it seems like they don't trust me and they're not teaching me what I have to do for the fight scene. We're not practicing for our fight scene. We're just practicing basics. And, but then, then I realized, okay, this is, this is what they were preparing me for. You know? This week on Action Talks, I'm excited to interview Kane Kusugi. Kane is an action star known for films like Muscle Heap, Ninja 2, and Common Rider of Vice. Kane also demonstrates his wellspring of knowledge on different international action styles. Japanese, Hong Kong, Korean, Thai, and American. He's worked all across the world. Uh, he also talks about his father, Sho Kusugi, and how he helped define the 80s American martial art film. Your influences growing up? Well, I mean, I was basically born into martial arts uh, because of my father. Um, I started martial arts, uh, Japanese karate when I was a year and a half old. My father had a karate dojo and um, he was, at the time when I was born, he was trying to be an actor. So he would do stunts as well. Um, and I think uh, his first uh, major role was when I was around five years old. He did a movie called Enter the Ninja. And then uh, when I was around six, he did Revenge of the Ninja. And then um, I had already started martial arts and done it for a few years. And uh, after watching his first movie, I, I knew I wanted to be like him. And, um, you know, seeing him on the big screen, even though he was playing a villain role, um, I thought it was so cool and um, so on his second movie, Revenge of the Ninja, um, I was able to play a part in that movie. And um, ever since then, I knew I wanted to be in movies and do action. And Yeah, I mean, growing up, I watched Bruce Lee, of course. Chuck Norris was also big. Um, then later on, I think when I was in high school, junior high, high school, Van Damme came out. So, um, yeah, growing up, I was watching my, my father, uh, Bruce Lee, and uh, Van Dam, and then uh, when I was 18, I came to Japan. Uh, I graduated high school in in the states, and I, uh, you know, I wasn't sure if I wanted to just go to college or pursue acting in the states, or. But I mean, at the time, I think it was um, I was I was still you know young. I think for action actors, you know, you have to have that yeah, that kind of look. You know, I think it's if you're like you know, 18 years old and beating up people, it's not really realistic. So <laughs> uh, I think it was, uh, you know, so I was uh, deciding what to do. And then my father mentioned, you know, you're half Japanese. So why don't you go to Japan, you know, um, study the language, study the culture. Um, and then maybe, you know, after a few years, you can come back. So I did that. I, I, I decided to come to Japan and yeah, I mean, it was it was quite different when I first got here, you know, uh, just, you know, watching TV, watching how um, the entertainment industry here is compared to, you know, growing up in the States. At the time when I was growing up in the States, movie actors just did movies and TV actors just did TV kind of thing. But um, that was that was in the 90s. Uh, but in Japan, it was everybody was like uh just multi did like multi they were multi-talented they did like movies tv uh host their own tv shows they would sing do commercials so that was something that was really new to me and uh, you know just watching that i was like wow you know i want to i want to do this you know i think i if i had a chance to be able to work here i could learn a lot and then um and that was when living in japan that was when i was introduced to Jackie Chan and Jet Li. Um, I mean, I saw Jackie Chan in like cannonball runs and those kind of movies, but um, not the movies that he was starring in at the time. I, I don't think he was really, um, they didn't really have a lot of his movies in the States. So when I came here, I saw Drunken, Drunken Master 2 and, you know, all the police stories. And, um, and then that was like a, a big eye-opening shock to me you know like wow these guys are really really good you know uh it's something different from you know watching 
uh, you know, the action movies in, in the States, you know, it's like fast and, and they're like flipping around and it, it was just like crazy. You know? So, uh, yeah, you know, I was 18. I saw all these movies. And I was like, wow, you know, the, there's so many action, great action actors, action stars in the world. Um, if I really want to, you know, pursue this, pursue this career, I just really need to, you know, um, work hard, work on my craft. And, you know, that's when I really started to do things on my own. I think until 18, you know, you're, you're still a kid. You're just doing what your parents tell you to do. You know, oh, you know, after school, you got to go to, you know, karate, you got to go to gymnastics and stuff like that. But it's not really like you're not in it 100% yourself. Well, I wasn't at the time. I was more interested in like playing football and sports and you know, hanging out with friends. And um, but coming here, living on my own for the first time and seeing, you know, all these great uh, talented action actors, I just knew I had to do more. Can you talk about how your father trained you? Did he did he just treat, te- uh, did he just teach you traditional martial arts or was it geared more towards film? It was more towards film, I think. In the beginning, of course, um, it was just basically martial arts, you know, doing kata, doing different kind of weapons. But I think he always, I mean, his dream was always to be in movies. So I think, you know, at the time when I was born and my brother was um, born, he wasn't sure if he would make it in the industry. So he kind of wanted us to have the basics. So I think um, the martial arts that he was teaching us was mostly geared more to movies. Um, and when I turned 13, even though he he taught us karate, he was always teaching us different things, you know, like how to use weapons. And he always, and then he had us learn gymnastics. And then when I was like, a little older, he knew that, um, you know, I guess him being the teacher, I wouldn't listen. So he sent me off to learn Taekwondo and stuff like that, you know, because, you know, he thought, uh, you know, kicking is more for movies and stuff like that. So, yeah, he always had uh, everything in mind was uh, was more geared to, towards movie action. Did your father ever talk about what it was like being kind of a, an early pioneer of doing Japanese action in America, um, specifically working with American stuntmen um, and what that was like physically, culturally. I've never really talked to him about that. Um, yeah, I mean, growing up, I was just a little kid. You know, I was just like, I never asked those questions. I mean, if it was now, I would I would ask those questions. But during that time, I thought everything was, you know, fun and fun and games, I guess. But <laughs> When I was working with him, I can tell, you know, a lot of times, you know, he was a perfectionist. So working, um, sometimes I could see that he was stressed. I don't know if it was because of language barrier or working with a different kind of style, but um, he never mentioned it to me. He was always, you know, uh, he always had that kind of stoic, you know, he did his best and he he didn't complain or anything. So I guess I never really, I never really knew. What he was thinking did, did, did he have stunt training from japan or did, was he just a martial artist that just came to america and mm, i think he was mainly martial artist yeah he, he he did a lot of different styles i know that but stunt wise i mean i think he could do the basics but i i didn't um yeah he wasn't doing like high falls or anything like that but i i, I do know that when he did enter the ninja he jumped off the uh, the waterfall and that's he dislocated his shoulder or something like that um i think it was uh nobody tested the water and it was really shallow and i think when he jumped in um he yeah he dislocated his shoulder and i i remember that really really clearly because after that he was always trying to um he was doing treatment on it on his own you know chinese medicine uh i remember growing up that uh, shoulder was uh for a few years it was bothering him you know he had that kind of like you know he would do anything to to make it in the industry and you know um even though maybe he didn't uh you know he wasn't in he was a real stuntman he you know he took that leap and you know he did that jump himself because he knew that would be his chance and it's pretty admirable uh it's coming over coming over and just being like, all right, I'm going to star in some 80s martial art movies and everybody knows him, you know, so yeah. it's pretty cool. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, at the time, you know, you uh, like growing up, I didn't think much about it. But, you know, like as I am in an industry now for a long time, it's pretty amazing what he did, you know, like, um, uh, you know, when he not being able to speak Japanese, I mean, English when he first went to the States and from there, you know, having a Japanese accent, you know, nowadays, you know, it's like, you know, you have, you know, you go to auditions or you do anything and it's like, oh, you, can you speak English and, you know, so, you know, I know how hard it is. You, know, you, you have to have something that's a skill that is way above others in order to be able to, you know, work. Um, and yeah. that's what he did in the eight, you know, in the eighties. It was amazing. Yeah. You can kind of see you know, similar things with Bruce and probably just a lot of it is personality and drive. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah. So you went to Japan you saw, yeah. so you saw Jackie Jet Li, you saw their, their real, their real stuff. Like you said. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, now that stuff is very different than american action that you know van damme movies for example yeah um so what did what did you see when you saw these jackie chan and jet lee movies like what was it about it that looked different to you and what was so exciting uh, it was more of like dance uh, like a dance i think it was more fluid uh the stuff that i saw in the states was like um the non-Asian action, as you would say, is more powerful, um, you know, like one, two, three. And, you know, you can really feel the power and stuff. But when it comes to like Asian martial arts, like um, Kung Fu, uh, Chinese Wushu, it's more like um, fluid, like dancing and really, really fast. So that was something that, um, you know, was, it was, when I first saw it, I was like, wow. Well, I didn't think, you know, you know, people can move this fast. <laughs> it's like, that's how, that's how it was, you know, it's like, wow, you know, and it, it's just, it's like nonstop. When I was growing up watching, you know, like Van Damme movies, it was like a lot of the action is like one, two, three. And then it's like, kind of like pause, you know, pose. Um, but like Jackie Chan, it was like nonstop for like five minutes, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's um, so that was like, that was different. And it was, it was exciting, you know? what what was the next step for you then did you seek training did you do auditions uh what did you start doing in japan um i started i was i mean um i was lucky i was uh i got opportunities here when i first got here um i was able to work on the power rangers i guess i guess here they wouldn't call it power rangers but in, in overseas you would know it as power rangers so i did that for a year um it uh so i did a lot of those kind of um hero um, projects. I did Ultraman. Um, so being able to do that, I, I worked with the stunt team I, on action. I learned with them. Was that a Japan Action Club? Uh, yes, I worked with Japan Action Club for a whole year. And um, even after uh, finishing that um, the Power Rangers for a whole year, I, I, I worked out with them. I trained in stunts. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I continued when I first got to Japan, I, I trained with, uh, I went to a Taekwondo um, dojo here. Um, they train like Olympic uh, athletes as well. And so, you know, I just continued and I wanted to try different styles. And uh, later on in my third, uh, late twenties, I started Chinese Wushu because of yeah, watching Jet Li and yeah, so I was always trying different things. I I uh, I did break dancing for two years. Yeah, I was like when I first got here, you know, it was like I just want to learn as much as I can. I was, uh, I was watching Jackie Chan, Jet Li movies. I was watching any kind of action movies I can get my hands on. I was um, really into like um, I would go to like the arcade here and I would check out all the like the fighting games like virtual fighter street fighter i would like look at all their combinations and um i would be like okay um i don't think this is humanly possible but maybe you know this kind of like three kick move i can maybe do something that's kind of like it or you know i would just like mess around and practice and stuff like that and, um i would even watch ballet um uh, just to see you know like movements and stuff like that and i mean i know like van damme was like kind of like that um, his split kick was kind of like a, a ballet kick. And so I was always just, you know, looking, looking around, trying to find new things to, 
try to find my style, I guess. In my early 20s, well, I mean, growing up as well, you know, just um, my father, you know, he had his style, his ninja style. Um, Bruce Lee has his style. In my early 20s, I was lucky enough to meet Jackie Chan and um, study with him for a little bit. So he was always like, oh, you know, you have to find your own style. You can't like copy people, you know? So I guess I was always just trying to find my style, you know, just um, try to learn as much as I can. So you took the break dancing, wushu, kung yeah. fu, uh, you had karate experience, you had gymnastics experience. What was, um, what did you find was the most useful when working with Jack Japan Action Club? I guess everything, you know, like when it comes to movies, it's everything. Um, I guess that's one thing that I was lucky. I was able to try different styles because, you know, um, when it comes to action, it's not one style that's going to help you. I think it's a mix of all styles. Uh, you know, even working in China, um, Chinese wushu helps, but then it's not just Chinese wushu that's going to help you to do their action, um, you know, the action that they make because, you know, one kick, you know, what, you know, as you know, you know, it could be like in a really narrow situ situation. So if you're doing like a front kick or uh, like an axe kick, you're not going to be able to do a Taekwondo kick, you know, like full extended. You know? So it's going to be more of a, like a wushu kick or something. So, you know, every style has, uh, it's the same kick, but they kick differently. So I think, um, you know, being able to do, um, uh, different styles help, especially when you go to different countries, and, you know, do action um, here in Japan as well. Uh, just doing Japanese karate helped, but then, you know, because I was able to do Taekwondo kicks as well, that helped and doing gymnastics helped. Were there any habits that you had to break when you were working in the industry in Japan? At first, I think, you know, growing up, I had uh, the action that I learned from my father and his movies was was kind of big. Um, I don't know. When I first got here and I was working in um, Power Rangers, it felt like, yeah, I mean, compared to everyone else, my movement was like huge, you know, and my reactions were like huge. <laughs> and then, I don't know, um, I think at first everything, yeah, it seemed a little bit too big. So I had to kind of tone it down a little bit, you know, getting punched, I'd be like, whoa, I'd be like, you know, it's like too much, I think, you know, it's, <laughs> and maybe it was because, I don't know, it was just like compared to everyone else, it's too, it's too big. So, um, were you the uh, proverbial nail that had to be hammered back down? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, um, I would get just hype up, you know, like you know, everything would be just like huge, you know, like rah, boom, and it was like my punches would be big, everything, would be, you know, then there, and then they would be like, oh, you know, just calm down a little bit, you know. <laughs> um, I think that was, yeah, that was the thing that I had to um, tone a tone down a little bit. In. How did you train that out? I mean, I, I have a similar experience going from huh. a God of War game to doing a Japanese game. And they told yeah. me the same thing. They said, you're too big, <laughs> uh, too much excess movement. And yeah. it, was a, it was a steep learning curve. Like, yeah. like it, it actually works different muscles. Um, yeah. You know, was it was it difficult making that transition? Yeah, yeah, I think it was, you know, um, here in Japan, uh, especially with the Japan Action Club and uh, the people that I, I learned from, they were really into like action reaction kind of movement, you know, like why, why did you, why did you do that action? You know, it's like um, when you watch Hong Kong style Chinese um, movies, a lot of times, you know, they're just like fluid movement, you know, it's boom, boom, boom. You can see it's rehearsed, you know, they know what's going to, they're going to do next, you know, because a lot of times they're just like blocking behind their head and they're not even, you know, it's like, okay, maybe he has six cents, but um, in Japan, I think it's more of, um, it's, they're more of uh, realistic, but uh, it's like, okay, you look and then you, you do the action. It's kind of what, what they're looking for. So, um, you know, th that, that was hard in the beginning, I think, for me. Because um, it's like everything, it's like you, 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 see, you see it and then, oh, you see it coming and then it's, okay, then you block. So then, you know, it's like uh, if you're fighting a lot of people, it's like, you know, a lot of things you have to do. I guess learning that is kind of like kind of the action that I uh, my goal is right now. It's just, you know, the action reaction, you know, because it's like same as as acting, you know, um, you try to make it as, you know, 
it's it's real you have it's real life so you have to try to have uh, people believe believe in you you like i think if you do you know a choreographed five minute action it's it's nice um and it's cool but after a little while people they can't really get into that character or feel that character because you know it's like acting you know like when you really feel the character you're really in the, the story you can really feel them um I think action is kind of the same, you know, like it's like you have to make them believe it's like real. So somebody's about to punch you. you, you look at it and then you react, you know, it's not like react while you look or so I think uh, making making that is uh, realistic is really hard. But when you can do that, I think, um, you know, people can really get into the action and they can really feel it and they can believe it. I think Do you think that there's something in japanese culture that values that sort of action reaction that realism yeah i mean living here for 30 years you know everything is kind of you know uh lifestyle is kind of like that i think it's just japanese uh you know for example samurai you know um the way that they you know when they do the samurai sword and they do the, like the bamboo cutting and stuff like that i think it's really everything is simple but there's always some kind of meaning meaning to each movement i think like for them, you know, it's like uh, just that split second when they need to put in the power, they put in the power, but everything else is fluid. Uh, you know, just like sports, you know, when you like golf, it's like, you know, at that impact or like baseball, you know, when right when you hit the ball is when you need the most power, but everything else is just like it's more fluid, I think. So I think with action, it's like that too. have least amount of um, effort, but just when you do need to put the effort in, you put that in. Um, that's important. Did you find that the same kind of action reaction uh, mindset applied to breakdancing in Japan? Breakdancing, I think um, it's more, uh, for me, it's more flashy stuff. Um, I think when I saw it, it was really amazing. You know, r right now, nowadays, it's like everything is more uh, flashy. You have like the, um, the martial arts where they just spin and kick like three times or something like that. And Everything is, is called extreme martial arts and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, when I first started, they didn't have extreme martial arts or anything like that. But now, yeah, I mean, just when, um, you know, when I first saw the breakdancing and how it evolved from when I was a kid. And when I was a kid, it was just more like robots and spinning on your back. But then now it's like, you know, it's crazy. Um, so I thought, wow, you know, I want to learn this. I want to be able to, you know, like... Um, spin and twirl on my hands and stuff like that maybe i can put that in my action you know just like one one spot and then do action maybe you can make it, uh give it a different um you know kind of like a spice i guess you know a different spice to it so i did that for two years um and i mean in my in my career doing sports and action i've been lucky knock on wood um i haven't had any major injuries injuries but um doing break dancing i dislocated my shoulder in practice um but i mean i it was it was fun you know i was i learned to do like thomas um on the ground and you know like uh an air and those kind of things so i mean in the end i think it, i only used it maybe once or twice but um i think it's just you know doing it and being able to learn the body balance i mean just like uh, doing gymnastics at a young age it's really important i think you learn to be able to flip and you, you know, you learn not to be afraid when you're like, you know, flipping backwards or something like that. I think when you try to learn that when you're an adult, it's really, really scary. Um, and, you know, maybe, you know, you don't use it all the time, but just being able to do that, you know, it helps you with your action, you know, um, if something was to happen, how to fall and stuff like that. So, um, you know, just learning breakdancing and the experience helped me a lot. And I think, know in the future can help me gotcha. if i want to try something different or something. so it sounds it sounds like breakdancing in japan was a little bit more um i don't know a little less tradition traditional than uh yeah, yeah. than stunts so it was it was a little bit more what, what like more like american style breakdancing than in japan um yeah no i mean like i i think i it was like 10 years ago that i started in my 30s uh so i mean it's pretty big you know you had the red bull Red Bull, Red Bull won um, breakdancing competition that was once a year. And then, uh, you know, I would watch the Koreans. Uh, They're really, really good. Um, Japanese breakdancers are pretty good as well. 
Um, but I mean, I, I just, I think, um, I don't think they have, I don't know if they have their own style, but I mean, it's just like, um, I was more into the power moves, you know, it's just like big moves. I wanted to add that to, you know, um, kicking, flipping and stuff like that. And I saw like Tony Jaw, Tony Jaw came out and he started doing like all his own stunts and flipping and stuff like that. And it's like, oh yeah, that's what kind of what I was, you know, trying to do. Now everyone's doing like a whole bunch of mix of mixed martial arts, like mix of everything, like flipping. And I think it's great. You, know? you were in Who Am I, right? Oh yeah, just a little. A little bit. Did you get to? Did you get a chance to do a fight with with Jackie, or was that? No, no, never. Um, so I was lucky because I was in Japan and I was um, uh, it just so happened to meet, um, uh, become good friends with uh, Sama Hung's son. Um, he was, and it was just like you know, out of the blue. He was going to buy a cell phone, and I was outside playing um, basketball in front of the train station. And he came up and, um, he. You know, he heard me and my friends um, speaking in English. So he's like, hey, can I join? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then we became friends. And it was like, you know, we didn't know who our fathers were, each other's fathers were, you know. And then one day, he, you know, all of a sudden he was all like, you know, yeah, it's tough having a, you know, famous father kind of thing. It's like, oh, is he talking about me? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, and then he's like, I'm, you know, my dad's Sama Hung. And then I was like, oh, my dad's Shokutsuki. <laughs> it's like, um, you know. We became friends and <clears throat> and then um jackie chan whenever he would come to japan he would have um dinner with him so he was like hey you know since you want to be an action um action actor why don't you come with me and meet jackie chan i was like yeah of course you know so i met with him and i had dinner with him and he was like oh so you want to be an uh, action star then you then you should come to my movie and and study it's the first time meeting Jackie Chan. He's like, hey, why don't you come and study with me? And I was like, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I went and studied uh, on Who Am I for, I went to um, the Netherlands for a month, month and a half. And I, I, I worked with the stunt team. I worked out with them. I helped with like wire setting and everything and for a whole month and a half. And then after that, he was like, you know, we're going to be shooting the opening in Malaysia. So why don't you just come and, you know, being in a little bit and I was like yeah of course so that was my you know that was my experience with him. ever since then you know, you know he's 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 been a great teacher and yeah i really look up uh look up to him what was the training like compared to the uh, japan action club training it was different you know like um at that time you know also um brad allen was there he was uh that was his second movie with um on the jackie chan team so brad was there a lot of them, of course, was Chinese wushu. Um, they were like masters in Chinese wushu. But then, you know, there was some that was doing Taekwondo as well. Uh, Brad Allen was there. So, you know, he was, I was like, wow, you know, I've never seen a Caucasian guy do Chinese wushu that good. You know, <laughs> it's like, wow, this is amazing. So it was like, you know, so many great um, talents from around the world that was on his team. And it was like, you know, it's just trying to learn and I mean, I, it was the first time for me, you know, working with wires and, you know, trying to help set up wires. And you know, I was just like, I was, I was just excited to be there. So I was helping, you know, okay, you need pads. I'm going to bring pads and just like watching and trying to learn as much as I can with everybody. Um, you know, when they trained, it was just, you know, like everything, boxing, reacting, you know, I, they were doing a lot of basics as well. You know, I was surprised. I was thinking that they would, you know, their training was more flashy stuff, but it was like, you know, just you know, a lot of basics, um, getting in shape and, you know, I guess they just knew that, you know, it was important. The basics were really important to enable you, know, you do that first and then you can do the big stuff. And, but then, yeah, a lot of, um, the practice was basics. They were doing a lot of hitting mitts and stuff like that. Just watching Jackie Chan and how he worked, um, taught me a lot because, you know, he'd have a whole day of like shooting, but then, would um train every day um uh, he would train in between shoots or he would train after um uh, it was just amazing you know you, you see him do all that action every day and he's still training you hear stories like you know like he would do like one one cut and it would take him like 50 takes or something like that it was it, he really did that you know it's just like one little kick it's like 50 takes and i was you know it's like two hours just doing the same thing over and over again it was like crazy 
um, but he was he was a perfectionist and he wanted to make sure you know everything was right. So after Who Am I, um, did you go and do Muscle Heat pretty soon after that? That was two thousand two, right? That was uh, yeah, a little while after I think I was in Japan. I came back to Japan and then I was working on TV a lot and then. Um, uh, yeah, my first uh, lead role here in Japan was Muscle Heat, and I was lucky. I think I don't know how it, it came about, but I was like, um, you know, if I'm gonna do an action movie, I wanna, you know, I wanna have the best guys. So I was like, we contacted Jackie and asked if, if it was possible that he had some of his guys help me out. And then, you know, of course, you know, the the, the great guy he is, he sent you know a few of his guys, his main guys, and and then um, also Ken. Uh, who is in a drunken master too? He came over and played the, you know, the one of the main guys and in the so ring fight, right? I remember. Yeah, it, it was um, you know, it was really fun. And then you know, it was it was cool too because um, the whole time when I was studying on Who Am I, you know, I, I, I got to kind of show the stunt guys like stuff when we practiced, but they never really saw me in you know in a movie or in a fight. So when um when they came down and they made the uh, fight scenes and stuff you know it was really fun working with them because it was the first time that i actually got to really really you know do um movie fights with them and um, yeah it was it was a lot of fun were you in control of doing um the fight choreography on that one um i mean at the time i i i mean i i trusted them so i mean i didn't change anything i was like uh you know, they would ask me like what kind of moves I, you know, I like or, um, you know, which leg I prefer or something like that. But besides that, I just, it's just like everything. I, yeah, it was all them. So what was the process like? Was it, did you guys do it on the spot or was it rehearsed? Uh, everything was on the spot. Real hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty tough. Yeah. I mean, like we didn't have much time either. Like a lot of them, a lot of the fight scenes were just like we had to do within a day. Even the last fight scene was one day. I think the the ring fighting was we had a few days, but then besides that, everything was just like uh, we go there, we shoot it, and we finish it kind of thing. Uh, I did one stunt uh, where I jumped off the bridge and onto a, a moving boat. Um, that was just you know uh, one cut one time. We just did a one jump. Um, like I got there, and then we're like, okay, we you're gonna jump off and onto this moving boat, and then I was okay, and then and then I just like tested it once just the speed you know like um real sandbag on a moving boat and it's like okay let's do it and then that was it uh, we just didn't have time but i mean most of the movies that i do are a lot of them are choreographed on the spot i mean not until recently like uh working with scott atkins on ninja 2 that was probably the first time that i worked you know, where we did actual rehearsals and we got to see what we're going to do and, you know, on previews. And that was the first time, I think. Um, and then after that, little by little, you know, working in some projects in Thailand, they had, you know, previews. And then, um, so I knew what we were going to do. And most of the stuff that I, I do was like on the spot. Um, all the, the movies yeah, like China, Hong Kong, Korea, we had um, had one day rehearsal. So I knew what we were going to do, but it wasn't previews or anything. We just walked through it. I memorized it. And then the next day we did it kind of thing. But um, yeah, everything here in Japan is on the spot as well. Um, recent stuff that I've done is on the spot. I never really, uh, never really asked you, what was the action design process on shows like Rangers and Kamen Rider? Uh, did they, did they choreograph those on the spot as well? Is that typical? Uh, yes, everything's on the spot. So yeah, I mean, they just show it to you once or twice, and then you have to do it. It's like you 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 try to memorize it as um, fast as you can, and then it's like once you get it, you memorize it, then it's do it kind of thing. Do you like working like that, or do you prefer rehearsing? Um, I mean, ever since I started, you know, doing, uh, I was able to do like uh, working with Scott and doing like uh, watching previews and being able to rehearse and uh, and experiencing that. I I, I like that. I prefer that over doing it on the spot because I mean, I, I want to do the best action that I can do. And I think that's the best way to do it. You know, if you know what you're going to do already, I mean, it's like, it's like acting when you, you have to learn your lines, right? You have to like, and you have to know 
uh, the meaning behind each one, you know, each line that you do, you say, and then, you know, you, you don't want to be like, um, oh, what was my next line? You don't want to be like that. It's like more, you know, natural. You want to have it natural, right? And so I think with action as well, I mean, um, a lot of the Japanese, the Japan Action Club, uh, a lot of the choreographers, I guess they prefer doing it on the spot because they say it's more realistic. Like you don't know what's, because you, you, you didn't rehearse it so much, especially for the, the people who aren't, like used to doing action, uh, if you rehearse too much, then it looks rehearsed. But uh, for them, if they don't know what's coming, they, they react like, you know, really more natural, I think, is what the uh, action coordinators here say. Yeah, for me, it's like, I'd much rather know what everything is and then prepare and then like try to make it look as natural as possible and react when I have to. I think it's, it's, it's easier to make it more uh, simple, I think. Because when you're trying to think of like what's coming next, you know, sometimes you have like excess movement, I think. So I prefer doing more rehearsals. That's always the question in my mind as I'm, uh, whenever I'm doing a Hong Kong style fight, it's like, how do I, how do I make sure that I remember everything without telegraphing anything? Yeah. Yeah. And especially if there's a pause, if there's a, yeah. if there's a pause, yeah. I guess it's called ma. It's yeah. a Japanese, yeah. Um, yeah. There's a pause, it's like, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to stop. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. it's like, it's like stopping in the middle of jazz almost. They always want you to do something here. I mean, like, so you always have to find when you have that space. I, I mean, especially when you're not like the main character fighting. If you're like, or, you know, if, if you're like waiting around, there's always you always have to find something to be doing, I guess. You know, like if you're fighting 1v2 and you're like on the, you know, you and your other partners fighting this one guy, but you're waiting for your partner to fight. You always have to find some something to do. You can't just be standing around because it looks fake. So it's like you're either you know hurting from the punch before, or you're like you know it's it's like yeah it, it's it's tough. I find it harder. You know, um, it's easy to play the hero. I think because you're all you, all you have to do is just beat up a whole a whole bunch of people. But then the people around. Um, you know, all the stunt guys, they, they're the ones that make you look good because, you know, they're the ones who have to make it look at, uh, as real as possible. You know, they're doing all the reactions. They're finding, you know, things to do in between, you know, when, you know, the other guys are fighting stuff and making it real, I think. And then I think that, you know, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the most important thing is the reactions, I think, you know, because um, no matter how good you do a kick or how good you, you know, your movements are, but if, the stunt guys or if the guy who's taking the hits um don't make it look powerful i mean they don't do the reactions it's it's not as powerful and it, it doesn't look as good in america especially um your goal is, your 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 job is to run in hit a mark and uh make sure that you don't if you, that you don't hurt the uh, the actor <laughs> that's the main thing that's like your only job really in american stunts and like look good don't have egg right yeah is that is that kind of a similar mindset with the japanese style many against one yeah i mean it happens a lot i think 1v1 fighting is really hard when it's one on one because it's really down to those two guys and then you have to you know um you can't I don't know the English word for it is um, you can't cheat, you know, like if it's like one B 10 or something, you can kind of cheat, you know, you, you're, you're, you're always doing something. So it looks like you're, you're, you're cool. You're, you're amazing because there's 10 people around you and there, there's so many things going on. You can kind of cheat, you know, like um, movements and stuff like that. But when it's one-on-one, -on -one, you can't cheat because, you know, people watching can, focus on just you know just the two of you you know every little move you do every uh you know reaction it's they can tell if it's if it's hit or if it's like missed or you know stuff like that in ninja 2 uh -huh. uh, you did uh you did a great one-on-one -on -one fight with scott so was that that was choreographed beforehand you, you just had yeah. to review the previs and you rehearsed yes yes we did what was, um what was that like when i hear all about that probably that's a long fight too and how many days was it I think originally we we were supposed to have a lot, like a couple of days, but in the end, I think, I don't know if it was only like two days or something. We didn't have 
enough time. Like in most movies, it happens like that. Uh, we wish we had more, but then it, I think in the end, we, we, it only, we only had two days, so we had to have to finish it really fast. So, I mean, we're going at a fast pace. It's just like, you know, each, each movement we would do, <clears throat> like set, we would only do a few times, I think. But I mean, we rehearsed. We had a lot of time um, to get it down. Yeah, I mean, once I got to Thailand, I mean, that last fight thing uh, scene was the main thing that I had to do. So, you know, um, I saw the previews uh, and then we got to the rehearsal area. At first, I think um, Scott was shooting. So I was working with the stunt guys. We would go through, uh, we would change little bits to, you know, uh, kind of fit me and, you know, um, different things like that. And I think it was like two, at least two days of, um, yeah, practicing. I don't think I was even able to rehearse with Scott at all because he was shooting the whole time. And, and then also he kind of got injured. So he, they wanted him to stay as healthy as possible and save his energy. So I rehearsed with the stunt guys for, I think, two days. And then it was just on the day of the set, you know, we got there and then um, we did bit by bit. I think, you know, like 10 movements at the most um, for one cut. And then, yeah, we just uh, shoot along the way. But I mean, for me, it was the best experience of my life. You know, it's just working with somebody like Scott, you know, um, he's the best of the best. So, I mean, it's just like, even though I wasn't able to, to rehearse with him it was like so easy when to block when to kick and it was just like you know um i i knew i can trust him it was just like you know this guy is so good you know like um i wasn't worried about hitting him or i wasn't worried about that he was going to be somewhere that you know would be dangerous he knew he knew the distance i guess that would be just right and then uh, so it was so easy you know i i can i can fully kick extend i can do whatever and he, it was never too close. So I had to like, you know, hold back up or, um, you know, pull back my kicks or anything like that. It was just like, you know, after working with him, I knew, wow, you know, this is, this is like, you know, the best of the best. So, I mean, this is, you know, what I, I want to aim for, you know, just knowing, you know, like little things that he did, you know, it was like not only movements, but, you know, his reactions, his timing, everything was just like, um, it was so easy for me to be able because he was so good. What is it that makes a great fight? Is it the ability to work together and collaborate? Like, do you think that that's what makes a good fight? Yeah, I think that's the that's the most important, especially for you know um, that kind of style of fighting where it's got to be like fast and uh, it's 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 basically like a dance. You know, it's not one person; um, it's the combination of the two and. If it's just one guy going on, going on and on and on, and the other guy isn't like participating and he's not following along, it's it's tough. I think that's that's how it is. Yeah, it's, it's definitely like just like dancing. I think. I mean, I'm not a dancer, but I'm sure it's like you know when you watch like ballroom dance and stuff. It's the two of them. You know, it's the it's the connection that they have. If you don't have the connection, then um, you know, it's just going to be all over the place. I think. I want to hear about working with uh, Jung Du Hong. How did that come about? Um, I it was, I mean, I was always a big fan of his and a big fan of Korean style um, action and Korean movies. It was a project that I was part producer of. Um, we were going to, we wanted to do an Asian style action movie, and um, and then uh, since I was a fan of uh, Korean films, I wanted to get a Korean director. So we were looking around and we were meeting with a lot of um, Korean directors and then just so happened to Korean action movies, they're the top. So we were able to meet up with um, the director and uh, we talked with them and we were pretty much set to work with them on this project in this movie. Um, and during that time, uh, they said that they were going to work on a short film, a phone commercial. And so they were like, oh, why don't you, you know, for us to start off our, you know, relationship, why don't we, you know, to kind of get used to each other's work style, why don't you just, you know, why don't you come on and do this? And I was, yeah, of course. So that, that was kind of like the start of it. 
in the end, the project didn't go through, unfortunately, but um, I was lucky to work with them on at least, you know, that um, commercial. And um, yeah, I mean, they were really good. They were amazing to work with. Um, I wish I could, um, yeah, work with them again. The, uh, if I remember correctly, the, the whole gag of that uh-huh. short was that you have to do it in one take. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But it's cut up like a hundred times. So well, it's actually cut up. Uh, it was two takes. It's two takes. Or two takes or. Was it cut yeah, up? A bunch? It was like only two, um, two, three at the most. But it was, yeah, basically two major cuts. Uh, one, one cut in the middle because it was. Oh, there's one cut. Yeah, uh, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, basically, that whole action scene was supposed to be one take, but then it was actually two takes. Yeah, like one, uh, once in the middle. I mean, it was. It was too tiring. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, sorry, yeah. I, I misunderstood. I I, yeah. I misremembered that. Yeah. So you did you did uh, there were two super long takes. Um, they had already choreographed it before you showed up, or did you choreograph it with them? Um, no. Um, yeah. Uh, like I was there, and they were making it. I, I in the beginning, they uh, it was kind of the same. You know, they were like, "Oh, what can you do?" Kind of thing. You know. Um, yeah, I was kind of nervous because it was like, you know, like uh, I got to their training facility and all the stunt guys were there. They're like, oh, what's uh, show us what you can do is what they, <laughs> what they said to me. I was like, what? So it's almost like an audition. You know, I was like there and I was like, they're like, what's your style? What what can you do? I was like, I don't you mean do something here by myself. You know, it's like <laughs> so I started doing some a few kicks and stuff like that. And they're OK. And then from there, you know, I would. That was it, you know. They 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 had me go to their their training. I don't know how many times. At least ten times. I was I was training with their stunt guys, and that was it. You know, they didn't they didn't make they didn't choreograph the fight scene at the time. It was just like they they made me go train with their um their stunt guys, and it was tough. You know, it's like they they would do like really long runs and stuff like that, and then um. They, I mean, they did a lot of basics. They, 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 they were teach, teaching me like the basics, you know, like how to like dodge a, like a hook punch and stuff like that and how to throw a punch. So, I mean, it was a learning experience. You know, they were teaching me their style, I guess is what it was. What was their style? I mean, you're, you're learning how to throw a punch. I thought you already knew how to throw a punch. Yeah. That's what I thought. I mean, I thought, okay, how hard can it be to throw a punch, but it's like, they were teaching me their style and I was like, oh, wow, this is different, you know, like, because I mean, when you when you go to Hong Kong movies or you do Hong Kong movies, they don't really teach you how to throw a punch. Yeah, I mean, it was like the basics. It was like one, two, one, two. It was like, you know, when you throw a punch, it's like this. Right. But then for them, it's like you've got to use both arms to throw a punch. It was like throw your left first and then throw your right. Or your, when you throw in a punch, it's like this. And then when you're ducking, it's like. It's like, you know, you're going to make a circle. So it's like, and it, it was like completely di- different, you know, it's like um, their movement was, how would you say? It seemed as big. It's big, but then it's small. I don't know how, if that, it's, if that, um, if that makes sense, but it's like, it's big because you, you're doing so many things, but then um, when you do it correctly, it's smooth, what it is, I think. It's almost like, I don't know how you say it's in breakdancing. It's like when you're doing the wave almost, you know, it's like you're going to be using both your whole body when you're throwing one punch or you're using your whole body when you're when you're dodging a punch, when you're just ducking. It's not just like, you know, up and down. It's like you're going to go the direction of the punch. You're going to come back around and you're going to go under. It's like it's it was it was like really it was different. It's like, but that's their way. That's their style. It's like, I guess, because they're doing the big punch, you got to do the big kind of like wavy um, dodge, I guess, because, you know, it's like, you know, Hong Kong um, Chinese action. You know, It's like a connection in order for, for it to match. Both of them have to, you have to do both ways. You know, when you're throwing the punch, it's got to be big. When you're dodging, it's got to be big. So the timing is right. They had me just do that all day long. You know, it's just like throwing punches and dodging. And then I was like, when are we going to get to, you know, choreographing the fight scene? <laughs> it's like, uh, so I did that like 10 times, at least like 10 practices. And then, and then on the day of the fights, uh, the day before the, the actual shoot was when, you know, they finally told me what I had to do. 
it was different. You know, it was like at first it was kind of like, how would you say? I lost confidence kind of in, in the 30 years of, you know, doing fight scenes, you know, it's like everything is completely different. I can't throw a punch anymore. This yeah, I know. It's like complete. I have to do something completely different. And and then it seems like they don't trust me and they're not teaching me what I have to do for the fight scene. We're not practicing for our fight scene. We're just practicing basics. And but then then I realized, okay, this is this is what they were preparing me for. You know? Because I needed, I needed that foundation. I needed to learn their style um in order to work with their stunt guys, you know, to get their timing down and stuff like that. So yeah, it was, it was an experience, and I had a lot. I mean, is that just how people throw punches in Korea, uh, or is this something culturally that they like when they watch fight scenes? Like, where does it come from? I mean, this is also it's also not yeah. exactly an an old form of action. That that kind of action, I think it started mostly in like '99 with Shiri. Mm. Yeah, um, and before that, it was very like Taekwondo style. Yeah. Almost no punches. The punches were just kind of they're just kind of this. This is something that I think a lot of a lot of guys here in America are trying to copy the that Korean style of movement. Uh-huh. Uh, sometimes I think sometimes some some guys get it. Other times uh-huh. it's like it's a little bit too Hong Kong. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of strange because, you know, in Hong Kong movies, some of the greatest Hong Kong stuntmen were Korean. Yeah, and it's like they can move like Casanova Wong and. Huh. You know, these various uh and Huang Zhang Li. Yeah. And they could move so well in Hong Kong movies. And they 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 just look Chinese, right? Mm-hmm. But the fact that like underneath that they have their own sort of thing. Yeah. Like they're, I don't know, were they like holding it in and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like we're gonna we're gonna do something crazy in 1999. <laughs> After the handover, we're taking uh-huh. over. Like it was is there a philosophy behind this kind of movement? Like, did you find yourself when you were moving like that and uh-huh. you kind of got into the groove and figured yeah. out a pattern to this? Was there almost like a philosophy or like a way of thinking when it came to moving like that in Korea? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if it's philosophy, but I mean, I, like do, be, doing it, I felt like, oh, yeah, this is this is good. You know, like because you're doing this, you kind of already have this timing down. You can throw a punch and it won't be like high or anything like that or too low or anything it'll just be they can throw their straight punch uh like like straight hook punches you know like flat ones you know so and then they won't have to worry about hitting your head i guess you know when you're doing action a lot of times sometimes you'll see them go like kind of high because they're afraid of hitting the head right but because they're doing this kind of like timing thing um everybody's doing this the timing is already down so they know they're not going to hit you so they can throw their uh, realistic punch and you know they can do it as fast as they as they want and then they won't hit the uh hit you because you know you, you're doing this this ten, a technique that they, they they have it's i guess it's a timing technique i don't know a timing so that it makes it realistic looks realistic and then it's a timing so that it helps that everyone have that connection and not worry about you know like hitting him or um distance or anything like that i think is what it is i think they they've mastered this um this timing thing down and it helps you know um it's to it's it's i guess like going back to um you know watching previews and doing rehearsals you know you have that so you you're doing rehearsals you already know what you're going to do you're going to prepare you prepare for it so then you can really you know like do your moves 100%, not worry about hitting the other person. When you're doing things on the set, it's like, you know, uh, learning things, action moves on the set. You're, I'm worried about what's going, what's going to be next. The other guy's also thinking the same thing. So then you have that mistiming and then you, and because of that, your, your punches are kind of not straight. Um, you can't like go 100%, but because of this Korean way of, um, doing action, they have this, or I mean, I guess that's why they wanted me to just focus on doing, you know, throwing punches and dodging and um, I mean, like um, swaying and stuff. Because on the day when they when they teach me, because you already have this basic down, it's like you already practiced, you know, because you already know know the timing of throwing punches and dodging punches and throwing kicks and stuff like that. So I think that was um, that really that was really a good experience. You know, for the first time in my life, I learned. Oh, okay. If you already have these basics down, 
when you learn on on the set, when you learn on the day of the shoot, you can still you know uh, perform at that high um, that high level. You know, like you already uh, rehearsed or practiced for days. Because I guess a lot of times in Asian projects, you don't have the time to you know, have rehearsals and um, have time uh, to have previews and the action director doesn't have time to do that. So they, a lot of times because of the budget, they don't know where they're going to be shooting or, you know, what kind of, you know, how long that, how long they'll have to shoot this action scene. So, you know, I guess that's um, now coming and think about it. Uh, the the Korean style of um, action really does, you know, help. Uh, it's almost like a response to not having enough time. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It comes from that. Uh, yeah. I don't imagine I mean, they have much time in the in the eighties and you know early nineties when they were doing those really low budget. You know, yeah. they, they had so many of these like low budget gangster movies coming out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I wonder if Jung Doo Hong was just trying to come up with like a, a vocabulary. Yeah, it's kind of like I mean, it's probably no different than the Chambara. You know, you have the eight directions, right? Yeah. And yeah. You memorize the sequence like yeah. that, that done. And here okay, we're gonna do combo one, combo eight, combo fifteen. It's like going yeah. to a Vietnamese restaurant. Fifteen, eight. <laughs> okay, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but I guess having that kind of shared, that shared language. Now, after you did this, did you find yourself? Were you able to then switch into because you went to Thailand? You you were in Thailand. You did a few films in Thailand. Yeah, yeah. They don't fight like that there, though, right? No. Um, yeah, they're not as strict, I guess, as you would say. Like you know, when I was in Korea, it's like you had to do it that way. It had to be that way. Oh, that last take, your you know, you, your movement wasn't like it was supposed to be. Kind of like you know, dodging punches. But I think in yeah, in other countries, they're not like. I mean, as long as it looks good or it looks realistic then it's okay kind of you know like hong kong states you know if you're dodging it it doesn't really matter how you're dodging or how you're throwing a punch as long as it looks realistic as long as it looks good it's okay kind of thing because i like that style that korean style of you know how they did it i was always i always try to keep in mind um to do it that way even now do you think that doing it that way might mess up the other performer like you have to teach them <laughs> do you have to teach them like okay well when you throw a punch you need to do <laughs> yeah no i mean that's that's the thing you have to um when i can't do it is you know like maybe oh i don't have the time to do it because you know like the um my opponent is just really really fast they they don't give me that time so then you have to ad adjust i think is what it is um you always have to adjust and see how much time you have and what you can do with that um during that time i think what it is so wherever i go you know if it's thailand or um wherever the most important thing is yeah you know working with uh my opponent or who i'm facing and and just um finding you know what i can do during the time that i have and in between trying to make it as realistic as possible um but trying to make it what i think looks good are, are, are Japanese coordinators also very picky about certain ways that you punch and certain ways that you duck? Is it, are they as picky as no. they are? No, no, they've never really, no, I, I mean, no, I, I, they never really mentioned anything. I mean, but I always, a lot of times when I work in Japan, I have, I have one, one really, really good friend who's a stunt guy uh, who I worked with for a long, long time. And I always have him come with me when I, whenever I have action here in Japan, I always have him come with me because because when you're working here, you don't have enough time to go and check the, the replays, like uh, playbacks. So I can't see like what I'm doing. So I always have my good friend who knows me really well. And he'll say, oh, that was too high. Or, oh, it doesn't look, you know, he'll give me signs, you know, like uh, first I'll ask him, how, um, like a lot of times I'll check myself, like what the camera angle is, um, what the, the lens is. And then I'll know, OK, it's a bust up. OK. And then I'll I'll adjust my movements to that. Because I think um, you know, like with Jackie Chan, with everybody, all the greats, uh Donnie Yen, you know, he he shoots everything himself. He knows all the camera. Because I mean, you can kind of cheat what looks really good on on the on you know, on the video compared to what it is in real life. In real life, it's like, oh, 
uh, you know, you're looking at it and it's like, oh, that wasn't, that didn't look that cool. But then when you look on and, and through the, the lens, it looks different. So I think that's another thing when you work on uh, that's martial arts uh, movie fighting is knowing how to cheat and how to make something look good um, in that, in, in, in the actual, you know, in the movie, you know, um, it's different. You can kind of cheat your kicks where in real life it doesn't look that good, but then it looks it looks good. It looks okay, and uh, you know, looks good on in the film because you know, you know that 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 um, it's from here to here. So all you need to do is kick really like you know, kick at an angle like this, and then after that, it doesn't need to you know, you can just pull it back really fast and it'll still look good. So that's the most important thing that I'm always um, I always have my 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 close friend with me here. And then, so I know the camera angle and then um, he always get, after each take, you know, I'll look at him, don't give you go, oh, it's a little bit too high. It's a little bit too low. And it's like, oh no, no, you have to like, you know, go more, kick more. So, it, you know, he gives me those cues. So I know, and I don't need to look at the playbacks. And then, so I think that's really important, especially in movie fighting. I'm thinking back to uh, there are some like, you know, mid 90s Hong Kong movies where a lot of pop stars were doing action movies and uh, the pop stars, they couldn't kick very well. And so like when they do a roundhouse kick, uh-huh. it kind of just looked like a diagonal front kick. And so they yeah. just put the camera like right yeah. <laughs> on the line of the kick. And then yeah. if they couldn't do a spinning hook kick. It was this kind of like yeah. pressing kick that went down. Like this. <laughs> so they put, the, they put the camera like up here for it. And then it looks like a good kick. And really, you know, that that is sort of like. I don't know, maybe that's like the Hong Kong style and probably, you know, the um, the Indian style, too, which is like, well, let's just shoot as many shots as we need yeah. to get the best picture, the best shape on every yeah. shot. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, I mean, like as an action actor, I think um, I feel like it's up to us to also be able to adjust, you know, like because a lot of times you don't have the time to switch different angles. So, you know, a lot of times I would check I would. You know, if they're if they give me like a chance to change, like oh, like Kane, what do you want to do? And then I would I, usually I would ask, well, where are you shooting from first? Then I would pick the kick that I would, you know, oh, if it's from the side, okay. Then if you do the split kick, it looks nice from the side. If you look, if you get it from the front, it's not as good, you know. So I would I would I would ask the angle uh, where they're shooting, and then I would I would um, tell them which kick I would. Use. How much control do you have as the action actor or the star i guess um in deciding where the camera goes let's say you want to do a certain kick uh-huh. do, you have, do you have the pull the control to say <laughs> the i want pull. this kick like you need to stand there so i can do this kick now how does uh, that work? <laughs> it depend? well it depends on um yeah it depends on the project you know if it's like oh yeah like a lot of tv stuff they would ask me oh what what, what, what can we do here and then i would then i can you know i can say oh well, I, I can do this kick and stuff but then it'd be nice if you shot from here um, you know, but when it comes to if there's an action director, I respect, I really respect what they do. So, I mean, I, I would, I would try to, um, to adjust to the, the, what they want as much as possible. Uh, I would never tell them to put the camera where, where, you know, somewhere, um, I want, I don't, wouldn't want to step on their toes. So if, you know, I, most of the time I would ask them, you know, okay. What, we're going to be doing this. Where, where are we shooting from? And then I would say, okay, I, maybe I can do this cake or this cake. And if they really ask me, you know, like uh, what what kind of stuff I want to do, and I tell them, and then I see that their camera angle is a little different from where I would hope it would be, then I would adjust the kick because you know you can always cheat the kick a little bit, you know, like um, where the kick point is or the angle of the kick, so that it looks okay. I don't know. That's probably it's it's not a skill that everybody has, though, because I think that most of the time a uh, a stuntman or a, an action star, they might not they might not really know how camera works. They're yeah. sort of they sort of trust the uh, the coordinator. Yeah. Um, and this is something that a lot of the previous generation, they, they never the previous generation of stunt guys mm-hmm. uh, before before my time. They didn't really make indie short films. Mm. They they trained in martial arts, got gold medals, did auditions, flipped a bunch, and then just worked. And then yeah. they stuntman, fight coordinator, stunt coordinator, second year director, director, retire. That was <laughs> that's what you did. But like my generation, we, 
you know, we we were like, well, I don't want to go to this audition audition stuff. I just want to do. I'll just make indie films. Yeah. Do it Hong Kong style because that's what makes sense. Yeah. That actually makes more sense just on an indie level to shoot piecemeal like that. And we could just sort of shoot. We can make ourselves look really good. Mm-hmm. And what that taught us was like what you're saying. Mm-hmm. We experimented with everything and like 99 of our shots were garbage because we were just figuring it out we're like why yeah. does this kick like why won't my kick straight like i was doing a roundhouse kick in a movie uh-huh. one time and i was doing the top shot uh uh-huh. and and i was, and i was like yeah i want to do a top shot and i threw a roundhouse kick in there and i kept looking at playback going like why can't i straighten my kick because like <laughs> you don't do a roundhouse kick on a top shot like yeah. it's really hard to do that it doesn't yeah. so that kind of trial and error do you think that that just helps you as a performer yeah, yeah, definitely. I think nowadays that's why so there's so many great martial artists um, and action actors now because uh, everybody is filming themselves, so they know what looks good. I think you know, um, you just film yourself on an iPhone. You can, you know, people are doing you know things for Instagram, for Twitter, and stuff. So you you get used to like seeing yourself and you know what looks good. So I think it's 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 good and it's important. In the old days, you know, you had big cameras like this and you can't really film yourself. And, you know, now I think um, you know, everybody's doing it. So they know what's good. They know what looks good. And that's why there's so many great, you know, um, great martial artists out there right now. Yeah, it's it's crazy. When I was in India, too, all the stunt guys, well, not all of them, there were a bunch of the stunt guys that in between takes, they would go off and they would just work on their short films. <laughs> Over a, just like you know just stealing stealing the location uh-huh. um and uh and i noticed that the guys that did that their reactions were better their kicks were better their timing was better their fall everything was better about these guys yeah. and some of these guys didn't speak any english yeah. but they had a handle on the filmmaking yeah but so that i could kind of go okay punch duck he's like okay yeah okay no problem you do it perfectly first yeah. take but then there'd be dudes who spoke very good english yeah. they didn't even know how to throw a reaction because they yeah. never they never looked at themselves almost yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean i think that's why i always loved um making movies and doing action in movies is because it's uh it's a connection with the other person but at the same time it's a connection with everything around you you, know, you, you have to know it's so complex that's why it's fun. That's why it's, it's, it's uh, worthwhile. It's because you're working with the other guy, plus you're working with the cameraman, you're working with the lighting. You don't want to block the other guy's light. You don't want to block the other guy from the cameras. Or So you're like, you know, each move, every move that you're doing, it's all, it's all calculated, you know. Um, it's all split second, but it's all calculated. because You have to know, okay, this is what is going to look good. This is, you have to imagine what it's going to look on the, on the screen, you know on the um, uh, what they're shooting so you know you're working with so many people and it's really complex but when you get it down it's it's the greatest feeling what was it like working with uh, mark Tacascos? mark <laughs> mark is a great guy he's um he's um really really outgoing he's fun to work with he's i mean he's um he's happy every day you never see him complain. He's like, um, he's like, I wish I could be like him. You know, he's like really he's so energetic. He has so much energy. Uh, he's talking with everybody. He's always in a good mood. He's, um, I guess, because he loves what he does. Um, it really shows. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I had the same experience. Um, when I uh, I did a I did a show with him, uh-huh. and, uh, and I was having girl problems at the time. So. Uh-huh. You know, you know, there's whatever. And, uh, and I was just kind of standing there. It was cold. We were on the uh-huh. beach and I had a blanket around me. And I was just uh-huh. looking out at the ocean, just kind of like stewing, right? like, <laughs> just, like angry about a girl. Right. Yeah. And he comes up, he's like, Hey man, everything. Okay. And I was like, it's just girl stuff, man. He's yeah. like, he's like, it's okay, man. Just put it out there. and it, It'll come right back to you. <laughs> uh, that's really really like that's i i can i can imagine him saying that that's yeah that's really good. and yeah, then he I mean, walks he, away like a monk you know? yeah yeah and <laughs> yeah, that's what it is he's almost like a monk you know he's i mean he's he he would talk to everybody and then he's always the same you know he's the same with everybody and really like optimistic about everything 
So uh, what are you watching these days, movie-wise, TV show-wise? Well, I try to watch everything. Um, you know, I watch as much as I can. I don't really watch much TV. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like Japanese TV or anything like that. I, I guess I'm into, like, a lot of um, documentaries and stuff. I don't know. I get, in my age right now, I get, like, um, I, I cry a lot really easily when I watch like real, real life stuff. So yeah, I, I mean, even movies too, you know, so I'm watching these documentaries and watching these guys and um, these people and their lives and stuff or different things. And I'm just like, you know, crying. I guess I, I'm into that right now. You know, I'm, what are you interested in with documentary wise? Like, is there a subject that you're interested in? I like watching people and their lives and how people, everyone's different. But everyone, you know, when they have a goal, how they work for their goal, I think is what I love watching. I mean, recently for me, it just so happened. I last month I went on, um, I guess in the States, they call it Ninja Warrior. It's like an obstacle course, right? So I was, I went on the very first one here in Japan and I went on and, and I haven't gone, I didn't go on it for like 21 years, but I came back and I went on it because it was the 40th episode this year. So it's been 21 years. So I, ha I wanted, um, so I had to really train hard for it and get back in shape. And, um, and um, yeah, so I was just watching other people and the way they think their mental um, state of mind when they challenge things. And so I guess that's why I was kind of watching a lot of documentaries and stuff like that and trying to figure out my own mental and how to stay positive and stuff like that, I think. Are you a father? Yes, yes. I have a daughter. She's almost four. I figured those weren't your drawings back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Did anything change for you career-wise, mentally, mm -hmm. when, you, when you found out you were going to be a father? What did that do? I guess when you find out, it's not that it doesn't change that much. And then when you actually have um, your child, it, it, I think it needs time to sink in first. At first, you don't really... It doesn't nothing really changes you know because i was like waiting you know i was like what i heard it's like life changing and stuff like that um but when my daughter you know for us it was really hard i've been married for we're going on our 14th year and um you know we were always trying to have kids but um we couldn't so it was really hard it took us 10 years and we tried everything and we were just like on our last um you know we we're just like okay this is the last time and then, um, you know, because it was hard on my wife, you know, so it's like, you know, if it doesn't happen, then it's okay, and you know, we're still happy. So, um, but we're lucky. And so after, you know, after she was born, I was like, what, you know, where's the life changing thing? You know, it didn't happen. You know, nothing's different. You know, it's like unbelievable, but it's like nothing. But after once, you know, a little while it passes, then, then it's, you really, really feel it's different. Uh, for me, career-wise, um, before it's like, how would you say? I was more, I think I was more like, oh, I don't really want to do this. So, you know, I was more picky maybe. But now when you have a kid, it's like you do anything. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm going to challenge anything. You know, like I don't, I know whatever, if I have an opportunity, I'm going to do it. It's kind of what it is right now, you know, like I'm going to, it's, it's of course to be able to you know support your child but at the same time it's like you want to show your child you know like you know you're going to do your best in everything you want you want to be a good example i think it's, it's for me that's it, that was the biggest thing i'm sure my my daughter will be able to see something on youtube when she grows up so i'm going to you know do the best i can and it's like things that i wouldn't do 20 years ago or 10 years ago i'm you know, it's different. It's like now it's like I'm going to try everything and do the best I can and try to be the best I can at it. Hopefully, you know, she sees that. When was it? I don't know. There's a certain point. I have three kids and there's, oh, a, wow. certain, there's a certain point where I, uh, I was I was listening to myself talk to my son and explain something to my son. And I and I realized, like, I am saying this exactly the way that my dad would have said it. To me. <laughs> <laughs> I swore I swore I would not do things like him. Yeah. And I'm doing exactly like him. 
Yeah, that that happens, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I always keep in mind, you know, like when I was growing up, I, I wished, you know, like certain things. And I kind of keep in mind, like, oh, like what would, when I was a kid growing up, you know, I wish like maybe my mom and dad would have done this, like kind of like this way. So I kind of keep that, try to keep that in mind and try to do it that way. But I mean, you know, I guess it's, it's different, you know, like uh, the way parents bring up their kids, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And now it's different or, you know, it's like, I do something wrong. I'd be beaten. You know, it's like, you know, stick belt, everything like that. It's like different now, you know, you can't do that. And so there's different ways of teaching. I think. And it's, it's great. I mean, I, uh, every day is different and every day I'm happy. Um, my daughter is like, uh, she just, it's amazing. What, uh, what's your take on where, the Japanese action industry is going. I don't know. I hope I hope there will be more action stuff because I mean they have so much to offer. I think there isn't that many like compared to like Hong Kong and China. There isn't that many projects here. Um, only once in a while. I mean, of course, you have the Power Rangers, the Mass Rider, and those kind of things. But um, actual film wise, you know, you have Uronin Kenshin. Um, you have. Um, kingdom you have stuff like that but they're mostly um you know adaptions of manga or comics it's basically what it is they don't really have too many original stories that become um action movies i think um because here everything is really expensive they don't want to spend time on action movies so you only get the a few projects um the big projects but I mean, they have so many great things. I mean, they have a lot of great action directors. But I think because there's so few um, projects, there's not that many action actors. A lot of times they would just use, you know, um, the normal actor and just train them, I think. You know, Japanese people love action. They love watching movies. So, I mean, there's still a lot of people training. So I think, you know, um, if there's more projects, um, it'd be great. And I think um, more and more, uh, the level would be a lot higher, I think. Um, if there was more opportunity. Like, what do you think needs to be done? Because, you know, sometimes I see, um, I've watched some of these. Uh, are you familiar with um, Karate-san's school? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Have you have you trained with, with them as uh, well? I've, I've worked with Karate-san a couple of times. I've worked with his stunt guys many times. Um, uh, and a lot of his guys, I mean, is he, in Japan, it's either Karate-san or Jack. They're the, they're the two big groups. And then so you always work with them. And a lot of them who, who go on to make their own teams and stuff like that. So I've worked with a lot of them as well. So uh, I've seen he's got a YouTube channel. And uh, sometimes I see his students put out fights that are like, they're really good. Um, they're, they don't really look as, you know, blocky choreographed. It's mm. a little bit more organic. Mm -hmm. um and then there's this uh there's this other stunt woman Sauri. i can't remember her last name mm -hmm. she did a, a movie called uh baby assassins i think it's called oh uh -huh. and there's another movie called hydra uh -huh. have you heard of these they're they're very low budget they're like i think i've heard of baby assassin but i don't think i've seen it but i i think i, I know who you're talking about yeah she's it's pretty young right maybe it's... she might be 20 something oh yeah 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 okay i know <clears throat> Yeah, I just I just wonder sometimes like the talent there mm -hmm. um, is is obviously good enough, yeah. and it makes it's like if you can make the raid in mm -hmm. Indonesia, like yeah. why can't you go and like get some Japanese stuntmen and stunt women, and even just like fly like fly to America, mm -hmm. <laughs> make a movie in, in low budget in America, or yeah. I don't know if it, I don't know if you can make a low budget movie in Japan. I don't know if that's possible. But, <laughs> But I always wonder that it's like, well, yeah. how how hard would it be to go to Japan and do yeah. a kind of like the raid style? Yeah. Not yeah. not the raid like violence wise, just like yeah. that kind of collaboration yeah. where you yeah. have you know, uh, maybe an enterprising American uh, action director of some kind working with you know an awesome Japanese action team and just like yeah. making something that is totally fresh that yeah. kind of like blows. And I just I don't know I don't know what the what the walls are. Mm. Right. Like, is it I is it difficult it's to do that? Definitely, it's definitely doable. Um, and I think everybody would be excited. 
it's something that I, you know, I wish I, I can do as well. I wish, you know, um, I still hope in the future I can do something like that. But I mean, people do do, you know, like they do short movies and things like that. A lot of, I know a lot of people, my brother, he's worked with a lot of stunt guys who do their own like um, short movies and stuff like that. But um, yeah, they never really, it never gets the attention like a raid or anything like that. But um, hopefully something like that will come out. Rurouni, Rurouni Kenshin made a big splash here. Oh, in the States as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was a big deal here. Everybody knows yeah. it. Yeah, that's um, Kenji-san. He he worked with Donnie Yen, so yeah. he's got that Hong Kong side. And he kind of yeah. mixed the Japanese and the Hong Kong together. Yeah. Do you think, uh, do, like, when you look at Rurouni Kenshin, um, it's a very Hong Kong style. And uh, I, I, talked to, I talked to Kenji. Um, uh, there was probably some backlash from the more traditionally minded Japanese stuntmen when it's like, well, you know, sword movies should be, you know, cut and yeah. wait, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut and wait. Yeah. Uh, there's not enough ma, right? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, is this a, do you think that the Japanese audience, uh, their tastes are shifting to like more of a kind of Hong Kong style or do they still kind of like that old school Chambara Japanese flavor as well? I think they, um, I think they like, you know, they like that style, the new style as well. You know, I don't know. For me, I think there's always going to be like a, a trend. I think eighties and nineties, you had the action movie. Then you started having the computer graphics, the wire action. Then you had like, people started getting tired of the wire action. Then it's like, Oh, we want more realistic. And then it goes back to like, you know, Tony jaw and the more realistic kind of fighting. And then after a little, you know, I think there's always going to be a trend. I think you always have to just put out something that's different, you know, try to make something different. Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy doing Kenshin a lot. Um, I also like watching, you know, old style samurai movies. So I think it's, it's just, you know, you just try to make something, you try to make something you know, a different is what it is. Yeah. By your best. Yeah. I think I, I appreciate samurai films more. Maybe it's just my age. Yeah. Or, um, they say that, right? It's like, well, yeah. you, you'll start, you'll start to like westerns when you grow up. I know. Yeah. Now yeah. I was like, oh, now I get it. Um, yeah. I appreciate, you know, westerns are so much like samurai films, also like same yeah. pauses, almost same kind of deaths too. Like the deaths are also very kind of yeah. <laughs> big and explosive. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Comparing the two, like, yeah. Sometimes I think maybe the Japanese movies are a little bit too Japanese. Hmm. Or, you know, like these low budget, these low budget martial art movies. Yeah. If there's no spectacle, yeah. like Americans don't really know what they're watching. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas the raid, it's like it's a horror movie with guys with guns trying to get yeah. up a building. It's very easy for like yeah. the average person and everybody in the world can kind of understand that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that that's what makes these kind of blow up successes. Tony Ja, another yeah. example, simple movie about human trafficking in Thailand, yeah. very kind of like. Yeah. It gets pushed really well. It's very simple. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's something that's a nut that I would I would love to crack that someday, yeah. like figuring yeah. out how to tap into the Japanese talent. I mean, I think in everything, all the you know, like the raid, the thing that was that stood out was like some of the grotesque like um deaths, I think, you know, like flipping a guy over and he hits the, the edge of a you know like a door and it like goes through him. It's like things like that. You know, I think that was kind of like uh, eye opening at that time. I think then you have Tony jaw doing his super moves and his, uh, you know, I think you have to have something like that, something that the crowd will go, wow, you know? Yeah. Um, so even if it's the Japanese style of action, I think there has to be something that's like, you know, something different or something that, you know, pulls the crowd in, I think. You know, um, yeah. to find that one little thing, and then um, I think that's important. Do you ever watch uh, Takeshi Kitano's movies? Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> he's a guilty pleasure. No, he's not guilty pleasure. He's just he's one of my favorite action directors because he is so cause effect. It's just one move, and mm -hmm. then the reaction. And sometimes the reaction is funny, right? Like, yeah. like, like in boiling, <laughs> like in boiling point, the guy says, "I don't need a helmet," and he drives his motorcycle off. And the off camera, the guys look kind of like where he went, and it just cuts to the guy's nose bleeding, and he's sitting there. <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's kind of I don't know, it's kind of genius. Um, yeah. very simple, and yeah. those are very low budget movies that he did. Yeah, yeah. Those are my favorite. 
Okay, and thank you so much for your time. And no, no, thank you, Eric. If there's ever ever anything else, just let me know. <laughs> yeah, cool. And if you're ever here in Japan, please let me know, and we can oh, yeah, catch up. And well, it's really nice talking to you, and nice meeting you, Eric. Likewise, thank you so much. I'll keep you posted. Okay, thank you. Take care. Yeah, yeah you too. Bye. Bye. Action Talks is available on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify. Join my Telegram at t.me slash Eric Jacobus. You can check out my studio at superalloyinteractive.com. My website and blog is at ericjacobus.com. And be sure to subscribe. Thank you.